Hi there, I'm Liz Walls. I'm a wind energy engineer, and I created and developed the Continuum wind flow modeling software. Continuum is an innovative approach to wind flow modeling that provides highly accurate wind speed and energy estimates quickly and easily. And today I'm going to show you how to create a model in Continuum. First, you'll need elevation and land cover data. Here's a list of websites where publicly available data can be downloaded. There are tutorials available here that demonstrate how to download data from these sites. The elevation data can be imported into Continuum as either an XYZ or a GeoTIFF file, and the land cover data can be brought in as a GeoTIFF or as a .map file. Also, when downloading, note that Continuum needs at least 12 kilometers of data surrounding every MET and turbine site. The next input files that are needed in Continuum are the MET tab files, which describe the wind speed and wind direction distribution measured at the MET sites. On our website, you can find a tutorial that reviews the specified formatting of tab files. Also, just as a reminder, you'll want to filter and quality check the MET data and make sure that the data used to create each tab file are based on a concurrent time interval or have been adjusted for long-term conditions. For this demo, I have the elevation and land cover data saved as GeoTIFF files, and I have tab files for five MET sites. The wind speeds at these sites have been altered from their true values in order to keep the data confidential. Okay, let's get started. To keep track of our time spent creating the model, I'm going to start a stopwatch right here. And then we go ahead and open Continuum by double-clicking on the desktop icon. First, let's save the file and give it a name. We'll call it Continuum Demo 1. Now let's load in the topography data by clicking Import Elevation Data. This pop-up window reminds the user about the required 12 kilometer buffer. Go and find our GeoTIFF file and open it. And then we specify the UTM datum and enter the zone number and letter and click OK. And Continuum will now start to read in the elevation data. When it has finished loading, you'll see the elevation contours appear in this map. Next, let's select the land cover key. The land cover key defines the surface roughness and displacement height used for each land cover type. In Continuum, there are three built-in keys which correspond to the US, North American, and European land cover codes. Since we're using land cover data from the USGS, we'll use this built-in key. If your project is outside of these areas, you can import a land cover key as a CSV file. Now let's load the land cover data by clicking Import Land Cover Data and finding the GeoTIFF file. To check that the land cover data was imported successfully, you can change this drop down menu to view maps of the land cover codes, surface roughness, and displacement height. Once the land cover has been uploaded, we are ready to bring in the MET tab files. So we click the button, Import Tab Files, select all five of the MET tab files, and this brings in the wind speed and wind direction distribution data measured at each MET site. At this point, all of the required inputs have been imported, so Continuum now takes over and performs all of the necessary calculations for the wind flow model. At each MET site, the upwind and downwind terrain exposure are calculated, the terrain complexity is quantified, and the upwind and downwind surface roughness and displacement height are also found. Once these parameters have all been calculated, the wind speeds are then cross-predicted between each pair of MET sites, and then, using a self-learning algorithm, Continuum finds the sets of coefficients that yield the lowest MET cross-prediction error, and this forms the site-calibrated model. Once the model has been calibrated, Continuum is ready to generate wind speed and energy estimates. The length of this computation time depends on the computer speed, the number of MET sites, as well as the terrain complexity. On this standard laptop, at a site with moderate train complexity and five MET sites, the model was formed in about seven minutes. Now that the site calibrated model is formed, Continuum is ready to generate estimates. But first, it's always a good idea to take a look at the model accuracy and to run a round robin uncertainty analysis. So, first, let's get a round robin analysis started. So, we go to the uncertainty analysis tab and click the button Do Round Robin. 
In this analysis, Continuum omits MET sites one at a time and generates a site calibrated model with the remaining MET sites. This model is then used to predict at the excluded site and the wind speed estimate error is calculated. When the analysis is finished, the results will appear in these tables. While it's still working, let's go and check the MET cross prediction error on the Advanced tab. The RMS, or root mean square, of the cross prediction errors are shown here, and the estimate errors between each pair of MET sites are shown here. You can export the cross prediction errors by clicking this button. In Continuum, there are four site calibrated models that are created, and each has a different radius of investigation used in the exposure calculation. Toggle through this drop down box to see the MET cross prediction errors for the different models. At 4,000 meters, the RMS error was 0.57%. At 6,000 meters, it was 0.43% and 0.35% at 8,000 meters. And the RMS of the MET cross prediction errors for the last model was also 0.35%. In this analysis, the MET cross prediction error ranged from 0.35 to 0.57%, which is considered to be highly accurate. The round robin analysis is now complete, and recall that in this analysis, Continuum systematically omits MET sites from the model creation and then predicts at the excluded site. For example, in this model, METs 1 through 4 were used to generate a site calibrated model and predicted the wind speed at MET 5, and the wind speed estimate error was found to be 1.35%. In this round robin, the RMS of the estimate errors was 1.1% and ranged from 0.55 to 1.8%. Since the round robin RMS error is low and is not significantly larger than the MET cross prediction error, we can confirm that the model is not overfitting to the data. If it were, then we would see much larger errors in the round robin analysis. So now that we're confident in the wind flow model, we could go ahead and generate gross and net energy estimates at turbine sites or create high resolution wind speed maps, both of which will be topics of future demo videos. And we're done. And the whole process took less than 15 minutes. Not too bad, right? So if you just have 15 minutes to spare today, you could give Continuum a spin at one of your project sites. Thanks so much for watching, and visit our website at www.cancalia.com to get more info on the model, including the science behind it and validation studies, or to order a free trial of Continuum.